1861, with the attack on Fort Sumter, decades of political attention exploded into all-out war. Over 90,000 sons of Michigan answered a call to serve in the Union Army, and about 13,000 did not come home. This is the story of the search for the records of one man's sacrifice in the American Civil War. I'm Jason, and Michigan, this is your story. The monument in which you're interested today can be found in Shane Park in downtown Birmingham. Built in 1869 by the residents of several local towns, Troy, Royal Oak, Southfield, and Bloomfield. Since then, this obelisk has been moved several times, including spending some time at what today is the intersection of Old Woodward and Maple Road. Inscribed on its sides are the names of the men from the cities listed above who gave their lives in the American Civil War. Each name is followed by either a K if the soldier was killed in action, or a D if they lost their life in some other way. As it seems to happen with this show, my investigation always seems to go in a totally different direction than what is expected. Records of the soldiers who fought for the Union in the American Civil War are comprehensive, but they're not complete. I started going through the list of soldiers on the monument, looking up information about their service records until I got to the name Malcolm Carter. Records of American Civil War soldiers predate the modern era of detailed record keeping that the U.S. military has today. There is a substantial amount of formal military records for these servicemen, but they are managed by the National Park Service and National Archives. Our first stop would be a website operated by the National Park Service. Here we can search for the Civil War soldiers by a variety of criteria and get an overview of their service. However, these records are sometimes missing fields or the data is shifted down a field altogether. Had I found a match for Malcolm Carter in the Union Army, I would have been able to request a more detailed record of service from the National Archives. Unfortunately, I did not find a match. On the national level, we have several other databases we can check. The monument indicates that the men listed there were not only Army, but also Navy. The National Park Service has a searchable database for African American sailors in the war, but that is it for naval records. Malcolm Carter is not among them. Another log we need to check is a list of naval officers. I found a list of these men in the form of a book called General Register of the United States Navy and Marine Corps, arranged in alphabetical order for 100 years, 1782 to 1882. Once again, Malcolm Carter is not among them. While the U.S. Navy did not keep a dedicated log of enlisted men during the Civil War, they have another data source that effectively fills this role. Called T1099, Index to Rendezvous Reports, Civil War, contains a record of everyone who boarded a Union naval vessel during the war. Like other national sources, Malcolm Carter is not listed. When it comes to Civil War records, we don't have to rely solely on national sources. Local governments and historians have compiled the service records as well. He hath loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. One book I have referenced several times in this show, History of Oakland County with Illustrations from 1877, has a record of soldiers who served from Oakland County. Malcolm Carter's name appears on the side of the monument for the city of Bloomfield, which is in Oakland County. Once again, though, his name is not present, but his absence provides a possible clue. One name from the Royal Oak side of the monument, J.S. Simonson, is also not found in the Oakland County History Book. His records indicates he is from Port Austin at the time he joined the war. We must now ask the question that perhaps Malcolm Carter was originally from Bloomfield, but he lived somewhere else in Michigan when he joined the military. In the state of Michigan, we have quite the set of comprehensive records for those who served the state during the war. Created in the early 20th century, these books called Records of Service of Michigan Volunteers in the Civil War are an excellent source of information for Civil War research. Each book has an introduction which describes their creation. Quote, At the annual encampment of the Grand Army of the Republic, Department of Michigan, held at Pontiac, June 11th and 12th, 1902, the following resolution was passed unanimously. Resolved that the Department of Michigan, Grand Army of the Republic, and encampment assembled, hereby request of the legislature and the governor of Michigan, 
that immediate provision be made for the publication of the record of the officers and enlisted men who served from this state during the Civil War in form substantially the same as those published by other states, notably New Hampshire, Connecticut, and Ohio. The department commander appointed a committee on legislation consisting of C.E. Foote, Kalamazoo, Colonel Fred Schneider, Lansing, and Alfred Milnes, Coldwater. This committee drafted the following bill, which was passed by both houses of the legislature in the session of 1903 and was promptly signed by Governor Bliss. The act is known as Act 147, Public Acts of 1903. End quote. Then the book goes on to list out portions of the bill. These books are primarily broken down by military unit and then the soldiers in that unit are listed out in alphabetical order. Paper copies of the books are available at university libraries. For example, Kresge Library at Oak University has most of the books. Also, the Hawthie Trust Digital Library has all the books in electronic form. If you don't have access to either of these sources, some of the books are available on the internet and can also be found in online services like Google Play Books. However, after looking through all the books, Malcolm Carter was nowhere to be found. So now we need to ask some questions about why his service records remain a mystery. Read his righteous sentence by the dim and flaring lamps His day is marching on The most likely cause is that Malcolm Carter's name in the official records is either spelled differently or incorrectly. On the Soldier's Monument, we can see an example of this. John Hollinshead of Bloomfield died during his service in the military. However, that exact spelling of the name does not appear in the National Park Service. A record under the last name Hollingshed, though, does. An entry for that soldier in the Oakland County history from 1877 indicates he died in Lexington, Kentucky on March 8, 1863. We can also see other examples of misspellings or alternative spellings of names in the Service of Records books. For example, in one of them, there's another soldier with the last name of Carter. A note for this entry indicates a possible alternative spelling of the name Carter as Cotter, C-O-T-T-E-R. Alternative spellings of the name Malcolm exist in the records as well. Perhaps we can look through these alternative combinations of his name and look for one which has a service record similar to what we are expecting. Well, when it comes to Civil War records, even something as clear as killed in action is not a certainty. The Michigan records which I referenced earlier had an introductory either written by Adjunct General, Brigadier General G.O.H. Brown, or Assistant Adjunct General Colonel George H. Turner. I'm going to let them elaborate on this topic. Quote, It was sometimes impossible in the stirring times of war for commanding officers to give authentic and final history of men who disappeared in a great battle, as in many cases the bodies of the dead could not be found and if possession of the field was yielded to the enemy, the fate of those who were made prisoners of war could only, if ever, be learned through unreliable Confederate sources. For such heroes who died for their country and who sleep in nameless graves, their epitaph is inscribed in this history as missing in action. A more honorable or heroic epitaph could not be penned. End quote. We also must have to consider that the name Malcolm Carter may have been how he was known around here, but perhaps he used a different name entirely for the military. For example, just as a thought, perhaps Malcolm was a middle name. It is here where a mystery like this branches off into many different paths. Perhaps census or family information can provide some details into who he was, or perhaps we're looking in the wrong state altogether. All my source information can be found in the show notes below, and if you have any detailed information about Malcolm Carter to contribute, please post it in the comments. All these men who gave their lives in service to our country deserve to have more remembered about their sacrifice than simply a name carved into a monument being eroded into history. I'm Jason, in Michigan, this has been your story. Thanks for watching. Whoa.